I think it's good that we start now. And apologies to everyone. We had to move to a different room. Uh, it's a little cozier, but hopefully it also makes for a good discussion. So good after good good morning to those who are online. Oh, good afternoon to those who are online. Good evening. I'm not sure. Thank you for joining our event, Greener Cities, Cooler Planet. Um, healthier people, unleashing the power of urban nature. So my name is Sharon Hill, and I lead the sustainable urban development work of the UN Environment Program. It's my pleasure to welcome you here today so that we can explore how protecting and restoring our natural ecosystems in cities can help improve quality of life, providing natural cooling, better air and water quality, and healthier communities. So all the good stuff through nature. Uh, we will hear from leaders in this field, uh, some very, very good uh, examples from around the world. So I won't, uh, uh, th this event, but I have to say that this event is jointly organized by the Jeff funded Urban Shift Program that we are leading in partnership with colleagues from WRI, ICLE, and C40, and the Cool Coalition a global multi-stakeholder network convened by UNAP and connecting 130 partners working on the global transition to efficient and climate-friendly cooling for all. And of course, together with um, our colleagues and partners under the UN Decade on Ecosystems Restoration. Before we get started, let me explain a few housekeeping points. Uh, the event is live streamed um, and I hope everyone on, online can hear us well. We tested it, so I'm pretty sure. Uh, this session will be moderated in English, uh, but one of the interventions will be in Spanish. English-Spanish interpretation is available in the room and online. For participate, participants joining online, feel free to raise questions via the Q&A. My colleagues will relay them to me. Um, so let's now dive into the agenda of the event. Um, starting with uh, Dr. Marina Robles, Secretary of the Environment, Mexico City. Dr. Robles. Thank you, Sharon. Muchas gracias. Eh, muy buenos días. Uh, besides that, the city that greatly and mostly contributes to the GDP, about 16% of the GDP of Mexico is uh, contributed by our city. And even though Mexico City is mainly understood as a, uh, an urban zone, basically a concrete cement asphalt area, in reality, uh, almost 60% of our city is covered with natural spaces and uh, uh, vegetation, and some and forests and so on and which a very important rural area with a vast culture in terms of bioculture and also only 41 percent is used by the most urban so to say areas and in this city in addition to that one of the things that we have that are very important to mention is that this it, it, it two percent of the whole planet's biodiversity is represented here. Twelve percent of the biodiversity of our country, which is in itself very rich in biodiversity of the world. And part of the things that we have uh, been working on in Mexico City to be able to to go with this pace and then comply with our commitment towards the world to mitigate the uh, hothouse effect uh, and also to uh, be able to contribute some adaptations that will help and benefit those of us who live there. It is a large investment in green infrastructure, a big investment in, a, in, able, in, in order to be able to trigger better conditions for biodiversity. This has led us to establish in the last four years 34 million uh, uh, plants under a very different logic of reforestation and revegetation uh, actions, where we have not only planted trees, but also the different strata of the communities, of the, veg the plant communities that will allow us 
allow them to have better conditions for developing biodiversity and to form plant communities that are more robust, a lot more complete, and that will improve, amongst others, the quality of the soils and the larger part of the uh, urban areas have a big problem, as you see, as you know, those are the challenges that we're facing, not only within cities, but also in the cities uh, and outside the cities. And so associated to this uh, vegetation scheme, we have a very important intention to pollinize our gardens where we have established over 800 gardens for pollinizers, for to, uh, uh, and, and this has given us, uh, that has made a very important contribution uh, from our, on our part to this uh, system, uh, which the humans depend on in a very large manner. And also in the city, we have established 16 new green areas that are uh, adding uh, 1,500 hectares of, large, of green areas in the eastern part of the city, which is an area that has been very unprotected and, and neglected throughout the uh, formation and evolution of the city and where we have had less uh, green areas where we have accumulated a series of, of uh, problems that have generated in turn some inequalities that are very uh, deplorable. And so this has also allowed us to establish some systems for uh, mangroves and some uh, 32 uh, areas uh, that are part of the ecosystem of the original ecosystem of our of our city and the world. Uh, you probably know this very well. This uh, these coastal wetlands and these wetlands in general have been abused by human action. And throughout the centuries in our city, these these wetlands ecosystems have been mostly affected. And so part of this wetland system uh, that we have uh, tried to protect has to do with some urban gardens, which is part of one of the UN programs, uh, which has played an important role to be able to promote and improve and to trigger another, uh, this kind of project, a uh, project of this nature that is so important. Also some other associated projects that have to do with an adaptation process has to do with uh, harvesting rainfall. And so we have established 40,000 systems for harvesting rainfall in the city to be able to give opportunities to, 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 to benefit the most marginalized areas and those that have greatest problems of uh, uh, water supply. And that is crucial given the adaptation conditions that we need to uh, live through. And this set of uh, issues has led us to two indicators that for us are very relevant and we need to share that with you because it shows the great route that we are actually following and that the city of Mexico is uh, committed to, uh, to bringing to fruition and, and to also trigger better conditions uh, for climate, better conditions for uh, well living well, and we have increased the a number of bird species and that tells us that it's a better uh, supply chain for food for feed for these uh, birds and we have increased uh to in, by 42 species going to a uh, total 397 species now we are counting and this is something crucial for the city of mexico city because in the 80s and 90s it was considered one of the most contaminated cities of the world and in the 90s, we did have zero clean days a year. In 2018, we had 99 clean days a year. And today we have 128 clean days a year. And we believe that these joint efforts and actions that we have been deploying are leading us into the right, in the right direction and we will achieve our purposes. And finally, and linked to this, uh, route and this purpose that we are identifying at this table, but greener cities, more sustainable cities and more committed cities to open up to nature within the urban areas. And not just as a scenography, not as a scenery that is outside the cities, but this is what is bringing, uh, generating better investments, bringing uh, better conditions for health, uh, for living, 
for and that will also promote greater economic wealth and we believe that this con this joint set of conditions that we are promoting within mexico city will be uh, uh, giving many results social results environmental and of course economic and financial results so thank you very much Thank you very much, Dr. Robles, for that inspiring intervention. Uh, let me now introduce our next keynote speaker, Dr. Heike Hen, uh, Director of Climate, Energy, and Environment of the Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development. Dr. Hen. Thank you very much for having me uh, for this great topic. And I'm, I'm obviously only having one dress. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't. I do feel bad. A bit. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is why I maybe. Uh, yeah. uh, but uh, really, uh, the topic um, is really very important. And uh, thank you so much, Marina, for your um, inspiring keynote. I think I, I would like to highlight three points. And one, you were all also talking about that we need a new vision for cities, uh, a new greener vision for cities. The second one is the, the basis of nature-based solutions for really cities for all, uh, for vulnerable people specifically, and build them inclusively. And then the third and last point, show that it works and scale it, scale it up as quickly as possible. So talking about the new vision, I mean, you all know the facts about 7 billion people globally living in urban areas in 2050 and uh, cities that by then will be much more affected by uh, climate change than they are already now. So talking about cool cities, it's really about cooling cities, but also from my perspective that cities would be much more cooler in the fashionable style of <laughs> uh, the sense of the word, uh, if we would be successful in what we are discussing today. And therefore, we must really transform the relationship of cities with nature um, and employ all the solutions that uh, nature provides, not only outside the city, but really take the solutions within the cities. And for the German development, uh, uh, for the German uh, government that I'm representing today, uh, for us, um, developing or, or working with partners in support of more greener cities uh, is something that we have been doing for like decades now. Um, but uh, in the last year, we uh, took it to a further step and really made it one of our focal areas in our new strategy. So uh, following an integrated approach, integrated planning, adequate municipal finance, uh, Marina was also talking about uh, sustainable construction and, of course, nature-based solutions. And that is my second point, nature-based solutions, or we can also call it ecosystems approach. I really don't care what we call it in the CBD. We just have to do it. Um, and uh, we have to understand really better uh, the connectivity issues um, of nature-based solutions, what it means for urban and rural linkages, what it means for employment creation that is also uh, very much needed in cities and where from my perspective nature-based solutions or ecosystems have a high potential uh, but we also we we have all the the interlinkages with uh, food systems with livelihoods with cooling and water security um, but we also have to have in mind that the different things that i mentioned are specifically important for vulnerable people, vulnerable communities and poor communities in cities. And therefore, we have to have their interest in mind and make sure that the approaches are inclusive and uh, ensure participation. Um, I think uh, all communities, all if, if you ask uh, uh, um, pe uh, people living in cities, how they envisage their cities. There are so many polls that stating that they want not cement, but greener cities. And if you make sure that you safeguard the interests specifically of vulnerable people, I think then uh, um, having really a participatory approach would show broad support for really this vision of 
greener cities. And the, uh, the last aspect I would like to highlight showing that it works. And therefore, yes, we need finance, we need new partnerships. And therefore, um, Germany is uh, very happy that uh, I can announce, and I'm also personally very happy to announce that uh, BMZ is now cooperating with UNEP, um, contributing to the UN decade for ecosystem restoration, uh, re generation restoration, catalyzing a nature-based transformation in finance, jobs, and cities, and contributing 4 million uh, for the years 23 to 25 for two components on investment and business innovation, innovation on jobs, what is very much needed, and the second uh, component, uh, cities. And uh, we have also other examples just to highlight, and I, I'm happy that so many of UNEP's partners are here today. So looking forward to our contribution, uh, our cooperation, uh, but also we have other examples highlighting in South Africa, uh, the Durban project with the C40 cities finance facility, um, but also in Jordan, improve, improving living conditions in disadvantaged areas of Amman, or in Rwanda, um, the green city of Kigali. So really, I think different approaches with different uh, components and focal areas. And I think all should contribute really showing that it works and then getting the support together to really scale these solutions up for this really green vision, inclusiveness and practice and financing fast and big scale. And that would then really mean uh, mainstreaming nature-based solutions and ecosystem-based approaches into land use and spatial planning. Not make it like the park here and there, but really an integrated part of urban development of architecture and infrastructure, talking about green infrastructure and not so much about gray infrastructure. And I think this then could unlock finance um, and unlock really the momentum and the political will that is needed to create greater restoration action in cities and way beyond. So happy to be part of it and thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Han. Uh, we thank BMZ for entrusting us with this exciting and ambitious project. And I'd like to um, recognize my colleague in ILO. You mentioned jobs. We will be working with Michael over there. So just so uh, you know that ILO is here among the partners that are already on the panel. Uh, now, uh, we were speaking about finance uh, under this project, and we um, one of the things that happened during this COP was 15 mayors from, allow, from around the world uh, um, announced a call for financing, direct financing of cities, of nature-based solutions in cities. One of those mayors is Mayor Daniela Levin Cava, mayor of Miami-Dade County in Florida. Mayor Levin Cava is one of the 15 mayors who launched the call and is also a key advocate of the work around cooling, uh, uh, recognizing the, the risks of extreme heat in her, in her city. We will now he hear how her city is taking comprehensive action to restore nature and how this is a key part of her mission to protect her communities from extreme heat. Hi, I'm Miami-Dade County Mayor Daniela Levine Cava. I'm sorry I can't join you for today's meeting in person but I'm wishing you each the best from beautiful South Florida. Here in Miami-Dade, our environment is our economy. From our world famous beaches to the Florida Everglades, we know that nature itself is one of our most effective protections against climate change. We've embraced preserving our wild places and we're committed to bringing nature into our urban landscape. Miami-Dade runs one of the most significant land protection programs in the United States, having saved more than 28,000 acres of sensitive habitat through our Environmentally Endangered Lands Program. Our most recent budget included $24 million to invest in the protection and restoration of this habitat. This includes thousands of acres of pine rockland, tropical hardwood hammock, wetlands, and scrub. Each day, we're working with residents, elected officials, and community organizations to best utilize our existing land. 
we're redesigning our cities to be more climate friendly with walkable, sustainably designed neighborhoods better served by transit for our 2.8 million residents. Countywide, we're also endeavoring to achieve 30% tree canopy cover by 2030, and our local tree planting initiatives are getting us there. As mayor, I have more than doubled our funding for planting trees to 4.5 million with an emphasis on areas lacking tree cover as we confront climate-induced extreme heat. I established the first chief heat officer to help us confront the silent killer with a focus on nature-based solutions for cooling our neighborhoods. And since March of this year, I have committed to growing the tree canopy in the areas where we have less than 20% tree canopy and poverty rates higher than 20%. And this work is paying off. In the past year, we've planted more than 11,000 trees and given away another 10,000 through our Adopt-A-Tree program. We've hosted tree plantings and begun a comprehensive restoration effort for our globally imperiled pine rocklands. And I am proud to say even our county's students are involved in creating nature-based solutions. Miami-Dade's Parks and Environmental Resources Department is coaching students on the importance of planting trees and how to do it in a sustainable way with real impact. For example, the first school in our county was named a Tree Campus K-12 by the Arbor Day Foundation, making it one of three schools in the state to receive this recognition. We've worked with our school district to build on these partnerships to meet our county's environmental resilience plans, as well as working with local nonprofits to encourage greater protection of old growth trees and the planting of new ones. We found that many houses of worship in our community have land available to grow our tree canopy. So we are working with them to create greater canopy in the surrounding areas. You can see that expanding nature-based solutions is truly a collaborative effort in Miami-Dade County. We recently launched an initiative with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to envision bold new plans that armor our community from growing threats of hurricane storm surge. We're proud to collaborate with so many innovators in climate resilience. In the near future, I hope to work with all of you, collaborating on efforts that will benefit our regions as we fight against the climate crisis. I'm sending my best wishes to you all at COP15 Montreal, and together we will build a more resilient future.